Hey everybody, it's your friend and your guy and your favorite obtuse comment haver, Gardner. And this week there are games rolling out official Steam Deck support. There are new features, new accessories, and open source projects are supporting the Steam Deck. That's right, it's Steam Deck news time. First up, Tom Clancy's The Division 2 is now playable on Steam Deck. This following an update that seemingly aimed to fix compatibility with the deck. In fact, that was the only thing that they mentioned in the patch notes. Now, the community is a bit split over Steam Deck support of this title. While many deck players are excited to see that Ubisoft is bringing the game to their preferred system, others are saying that the game is somewhat unstable. What's been your experience with The Division 2? Have you got it to launch on deck, or are you playing it on PC? Sound off in the comments, I'd love to hear from you. So it looks like Dbrand is bringing their revamped Killswitch case to the market. In case you missed it, see what I did there? Dbrand began taking pre-orders of their original Killswitch case last year, which included a magnetic accessory mounting system. They had manufactured tons of cases and then sent out many to reviewers like myself, and as they were about to start shipping orders, The Verge realized that the magnets in the case were negatively impacting the Delta cooling fan on some Steam Decks. Throughout their testing of the deck, Dbrand had never encountered the Delta fan, since by that point Valve had switched to the Huang fan. Well, Dbrand did the right thing and delayed the case until they could come up with a mechanical attachment system that wouldn't potentially harm Steam Deck hardware, and it seems that they've come up with a solution. Now, this case should be safe to use on any Steam Deck, it includes a mechanical attachment point, and Dbrand plans to release the STL files so that the community can actually make their own attachments for this case. According to Dbrand's official Twitter account, they plan to start shipping their redesigned case throughout quarter one. Now, I've been in contact with their team, and I should have a review unit of the new Kill Switch case by the end of the month. Get subscribed so that you don't miss that. And while we're at it, why not like that smash button? Now, you would think that subscribing would be how you tell YouTube that you want to see more content like this, but nope, it's the like button, go figure. So make sure you hit the like button, and thanks. So you've probably heard that Google Stadia is ending their cloud gaming service, but what you might not have heard is that Google has released a firmware update for the controller that enables Bluetooth support. Now, this is big news for folks who don't want to toss out perfectly good Stadia controllers. If you want to enable Bluetooth on your Stadia controller, you can use the link below to upgrade your firmware. What I find somewhat disheartening about all of this is that these controllers are basically e-waste unless people know that they can update their controller and then go and actually do it. Why Google opted to not push this as an upgrade automatically is beyond me. For a company that claims to care about the environment, leaving this as a self-serve option is completely baffling to me but I'm glad that they at least took this half measure and opened up the uh, controller to use Bluetooth. But if it had the capability to use Bluetooth, why didn't they just have it implemented in the first place? It's bonkers. Next up, Cody 20 has released this week with a raft of new features, including support for the Steam Deck's controls. If you don't know what Cody is, it started off as Xbox Media Center or XBMC for short. It's open source home theater PC software that provides a beautiful UI to view and manage your entire collection. Well, this new version has support for the AV1 codec and hardware decoding via the VA API on Linux systems, as well as many other features, including the aforementioned Steam Deck controller support. Now, my question is, will you be watching your favorite media through Kodi on your Steam Deck? Leave me a comment and let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Next up, we've known for a while that Valve's working on a new VR headset codenamed Deckard. But details have been relatively scant on this device, though that hasn't stopped Brad Lynch from continuing to dig. Broadly speaking, this is what we know about the Deckard. It's a standalone VR headset that reportedly runs on a 64-bit ARM SoC. It'll run on an ARM version of SteamOS. It reportedly has a second x86-based processor built in, which I didn't know until people corrected me over on ViewSync. And now we know, thanks to more digging from Brad, sadly it's Bradley on YouTube, that GameScope can now run as a VR overlay. Now, if you don't know what GameScope is, it's in charge of the display output for the Steam Deck while it's in game mode. It handles which window has focus, simulates exclusive full screen for games that don't support borderless windows, it rescales windows so that they fit the deck's screen, and allows the Steam Deck client to switch between active applications. Because of this, folks are speculating that the headset is running on SteamOS much like it is on the deck. 
And this would make sense. Valve's not gonna maintain two different operating systems after all. So the question is, will Valve be shipping the custom APU that's in the Steam Deck in the Deckard? I don't know, maybe it's something similar at least. And how would having two different CPUs in the Deckard make uh, for a gameplay experience? I would love to hear your thoughts, leave them below. So it looks like land transfers are going to be rolling out sooner rather than later on the Steam Deck. This is according to a post by uh, Reddit user Jetoff. Or is it Jet Off? Foot, foot. The name is Rad Thibodeox. Over in the Steam Deck subreddit. Now, Jet Off shared a screenshot of the Steam Deck beta client with an option for game transfer over local network. It says, quote, If this is enabled, Steam allows to transfer game files from one PC on your local network, reducing your internet traffic while downloading or updating a game. And the options it provide are don't allow any local transfers allow transfers from my own PC, allow transfers from my Steam friends, and allow transfers from any user. According to Jetoff, the settings are visible to him in big picture mode on his desktop, as well as in game mode on his Steam Deck. But selecting the option doesn't do anything, and the setting doesn't seem to stick. So how soon will we be seeing this feature roll out? Now, I'd like to see it in February, as we've been reporting on it for seemingly ages at this point. And it'll definitely be a neat feature that will save people bandwidth and speed up downloads for folks who have slow or limited internet connections and have already got the game downloaded on one PC. But also, can you imagine like if 100 people with Steam Decks all connected to the same network and everyone allowed uh, shares from anybody? How quickly would it bring that network to its knees? <laughs> so a new Steam Deck beta client has hit. This includes a few miscellaneous improvements. First, it fixed a case where opening the on-screen keyboard failed to simulate a uh, keyboard input for certain games. They also added uh, up and down arrow keys, but in order to use this, you have to uh, shift the keyboard to use left and right as up and down. They added an option to ignore Steam rewards if they were registered by another user on the device already. They decreased the size of the full and partial controller support icons for app portraits, and they added pinned notifications for new inventory items, trade offers, async game turns, moderator messages, offline chat messages, and help request replies. And well, that's it. I mean, that's it for Steam Deck news this week anyway. Don't forget that I would love to hear your thoughts about any of the topics we covered in this video. Sound off below. I want to give a special shout out to my friends on Patreon and my YouTube members. It's because of these fine folks that I've been able to build this show into what it is today. If you believe in what I'm doing and you want to become a Steam Deck warrior, use the links below. And thanks. That's going to do it for now though. Thank you so much for spending time here with me today, and I'll see you guys next time.